Indian High Court rejects recognition of gay marriage, cites Hindu culture. On April 14th, the High Court of ooh, pra Prayagraj in Uttar Pradesh, India, rejected the plea of a lesbian couple to have their marriage recognized. The government of Uttar Pradesh opposed the plea, insisting that same-sex marriage is against Indian culture and the Hindu religion. Quote, in India, marriage is considered a sacred san sanskar, um, which is, I'll get into that in a second. Whereas in other countries, marriage is a contract, Uttar Pradesh's council said. The state's council also explained that India, quote, runs according to the Indian culture, religions, and Indian law. The council added that marriage without a man is unacceptable since it is it is beyond the concept of what is considered a family in Indian culture. Although the Hindu Marriage Act of 1995 does not explicitly prohibit, prohibit marriage between same-sex couples, it defines a valid marriage as between a groom and a bride. Uh, Justice Sekar Kumar Yadav eventually rejected the couple's plea and also dismissed the case submitted by the mother of um, one of the couples, which accused the other of abducting her daughter. Wait, what? Who? Who? Okay, can you go over this? Who abducted who? And what? What is this like? Is, this is against the. Uh, so India approves this marriage, but this court doesn't. Like, how does this work? What's the relationship? No, 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 no. And who? There okay. is zero recognition of any same-sex marriage in India. Okay, let, let, let me, there's no, there's no legal recognition of that. Th these person, these, this lesbian couple filed a case and they were trying to get it recognized. They were trying to bring it up through the oh. high courts and have it be recognized. Um, part of their argument is that, so in India, you don't have a uniform civil code. There is different civil codes for different family matters um, or family for different family law, depending on your religion or background that you come from. So there's, there's the Muslim personal law, there's Hindu personal law, there's Sikh personal law, there's Parsi personal law. They have different laws according to your own religious background, which there's historical reasons why this came to be personally. It doesn't make any sense to me <laughs> and okay. it le well, leads to a lot of consequences nowadays where things so, like just co like are contradictory and they don't make sense from the outside so because of this because there are all these different types of personal laws it makes explaining indian personal law very civil code like very confusing so if i get things wrong i apologize um but like i said because there are different rules for different communities, it gets very confusing. So this is in regards to a lesbian couple from a Hindu background. So because they are from a Hindu background, they are subject to the Hin Hindu personal law, therefore the Hindu Marriage Act of 1995. So they're arguing under the Hindu Marriage Act, which they would have to be married under because they are from a Hindu background, that the that, that act does not specifically name that marriage is between a man or woman it says two persons but later in the law it specifies that it's between a groom and a bride it doesn't necessarily specify the sex of the people involved so they were trying to get their marriage recognized through their reading of the law they also had some arguments on the basis of the ruling that um was fairly recent, which decriminalized homosexuality in India. And the... Okay, go ahead. And, and fi the final thing that you were like, wait, hold up, what? So, you know, this is a lesbian couple. The mother of one of the women in this relationship filed basically, a, 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 I think it was the habeas corpus, but basi basically she accused the other woman of abducting her daughter, which is very common in India that... Um, wait, is when, it? It is. It's very common oh. that when you, you are in a relationship and cohabitating, when you're living with your partner and your family doesn't approve of your relationship, they will file abduction cases or missing persons cases against you. So but the this, police is a, are this is a the woman police abducting. are utilized to harass the couple that is disapproved oh. of by the family. And oftentimes, even though these are adults, consenting adults involved, the police will nevertheless 
force the couple apart and force them to go back with their family. And I've talked okay, to many but people. Is, of, that, yeah. is it common for a woman to be accused of abducting another woman? That's kind of for lesbians. Right? Yes. Oh. And, and it, it, so, okay. The, when the family doesn't approve. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I, I don't okay but it have we have actual examples of women abducting lesbian women abducting other women no right like, uh, this is not like, to my knowledge i mean it's a big country so i'm sure it's happened at least once i know but this is uh, such a weird accusation you know what i mean it's not weird this happens constantly to couples that are not approved of by their families still weird i don't care if how much it happens it's, still it's very wrong weird. Oh, uh, yeah. oh, I'm so glad Katie is in the live chat. Um, yeah, I highlighted Katie, her comments. I remember Katie last year sent me a story about how there was a state, I think in the South, that actually put up special protections for gay couples because they get so frequently accused of abduction of each other. And they put up a special law that basically says that the police are not allowed to get involved and utilize as a way to harass couples in this way. Like they put up extra protections. So Katie, if you could please remind me what state was involved what? with that. I am but offended that the cover it's, it's of so this common that there are now states getting involved with legislating against it. Okay. But anyway, why is the cover two guys if this was like a whole about you know some lesbians? <laughs> you just want to see lesbians, that's what you're getting at. <laughs> I know it? you. Okay. <laughs> okay, so can we? I start a whole bunch of comments. Oh, I have a, another question before we go to the start comments. Why is the high court, the you know, Uttar Pradesh high court, mentioning Hinduism as a reason? Wouldn't that be like violating like this secularism in India? Like, as like, shouldn't it be like, isn't it shouldn't it be giving a different reason, even though that's the actual reason? Should they, should they not like if they're mentioning all oh, like this is because of Hinduism, that's why we're rejecting this. Isn't that like uh, unconstitutional? So, okay. This is what you would think, but this is what the difference between having a uniform civil code, like say America, and then India's version of secularism, which is kind of like designating the laws according to the different groups to like kind of legislate and try to not interfere with the faith practices of the group. It's very complicated. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But technically, no, it's not interfering with the secularism of in, in India because they're going by, they are discussing the matter on Hindu personal law. Like it, the personal law for Hindus is inherently about Hinduism. <laughs> um, and the state has to make decisions about this. It has to make decisions. It has to balance what is quote unquote Hinduism and then what is the matter of the state and what is the, what should the state legislate and not allow and get involved in? So it's so very effectively messy. They, so effectively, the courts, the so-called secular courts, because of these personal laws, are having to actively decide what's part of a religion and what's not part of a religion all the time. Um, somewhat, they might not always be making a judgment on what is and is not a part of a religion. They may say they may acknowledge that this is part of religion, but say this may be a part of your religion, but we cannot allow this. So for example, triple to lock is one of those examples. Like they don't allow. Obviously there's okay. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, obviously okay, so that's hey, that's a good precedent. Okay. So why is it that we could be like, if the, if the Uttar Pradesh court comes and says like, Hey, this is part of Hinduism. So we can't have it. Don't we will like, well, in India, we have precedent for the triple talaq thing was part of Islam. And you were like, well, even though it's part of this, Islam, we're still going to get rid of that. So we're not always going to submit to, you know, whatever nonsense culture you have. So we could also apply the same thing about to the here. We could ignore it. Theoretically, yes. But mm -hmm. OK, again, personal law is freaking confusing. And all I know, I know yeah. is that when people try to make changes to the Hindu personal law or the Muslim personal law, it gets spicy. It gets as spicy. It gets well, real India. heated and people start to lose their minds, especially with the Muslim personal law. Like it, this is it, one of the most contentious issues in the country. Um, and, uh, <laughs> 
Rubber Stormy and St. Suzanne will probably pass a bar exam in India if she keeps up at this for a couple more years. <laughs> well, I don't know about that because I'm still like, what this this construction, it's it's so um it's so outside of the construction of law that I'm used to in my country that it's I um have previously not talked about it in a way that's accurate because it's just like so dissimilar. Um but uh I think it's, I have a I whole think, bunch of comments by Bulbul and Katie that we want to get into. Yes, yes, yes. Well, well, the last thing I want to say, so they're saying that in India, marriage is considered a sacred uh, sanskar, which is like um, loosely translated as like a rite of passage. And that, you know, in other, it's a contract. And that this is, this is a sacred rite of passage that's only for men and women, which seems like it's so antithetical to Hinduism to have a monolithic Hinduism. That is like antithetical right. to the construction of Hinduism oh itself. Yeah, so who are you right. to say that this is not within your sacred sanskar? Like, right. it, it, it doesn't make sense to me. Like, it's not within Indic culture. It says who? Yeah. And it's also confusing because there is no one culture. There's no one Indic culture. There's just like this is a whole combinations of different cultures. It's a very interesting because when we attack Hinduism, people are like, oh, you can't attack Hinduism because there's no one Hinduism. Exactly. And then, they and then all of a sudden they have like, oh, here's the one true Hinduism. I'm like, what happened to not there? They're, they're not being one true Hinduism. Like, I don't know. It's, it's, I always, it's like the Matrix, you know, when you, you know, it's, you know, when you're trying to shoot at it, right? It just like dodges, it becomes this like this. It, it, it goes from being a particle to a wave, right? So like, oh, you can't attack us because we're like a wave. Right? Like your bullets just go right through, right? And all of a sudden when it wants to enforce its way upon people, it becomes matter. It becomes one thing. But then when you want to attack it, it becomes like, oh, what Hinduism? Hinduism what? Hinduism, it's not even called Hinduism, okay? It's like, that's just your name for it, okay? It's not even a thing, okay? So it's just like, it has that flexibility to become a thing, another thing, depending on what it's trying to do. Anyways, we do have a whole bunch of comments that we want to Yeah. Yeah. Um, wait, there was another point yeah. I wanted to make. Shoot, You're it'll like, come back diversity. to Diversity. It was diversity. Okay, yeah. Yeah, um, Katie is saying the cases for legalizing gay marriage in the Delhi High Court are still ongoing. True. You know, there's a lot of people trying to get this going forward in the legal system. So there's a lot of cases going at once. This was just one. Um, the hearing is being delayed by the Indian government. That is honestly the only hope right now, even with all the delays. So, yeah, we'll see how the thing in, in Delhi is going. But the legal system is notoriously overburdened. Um, Katie is also saying sanskar is cultural values. If you're a wife and not slaving for your husband's family, you're not sanskari or unsanskari. Um, if you wear Western clothing as a girl, you're not sanskari. Interesting. Yeah, like it's, it's a very broad concept that I'm not able to really expand upon. Um, Bubble is saying Sounds usually... like Harami, but go on. Oh, you're kind of right. Um, so in regards to talking about the abduct abduction allegations in this issue, Bubble is saying usually the dude and the eloped couple face abduction and RAPE charges by the girl's family. So yeah, this is used against straight couples as well. Um, uh, Katie is saying the police actually kidnap adults on behalf of their parents. Yes, exactly what I was saying. I personally know people who have had their partners being accused of that. Oh my God, that's horrible. I can only imagine the stress. Holy crap. Um, and so, yeah, and again, with these abdu abduction charges, the idea behind these charges is to harass the couple and also send the cops on their chase and return them to their families. Katie is continuing and saying, my parents accused my trans-affirming psychiatrist of brainwashing people into joining some cult, LOL, all because she told them that I am trans and it's not a disease. Yeah. Um, and in terms of your question, like, isn't this violating secularism? Bulbul is saying, no, the judge isn't violating anything. Judgment, judgments in India often quote religious texts, especially for family law matters. Um, which is just such a disservice to the populace because you're chaining your populace to like texts that were written hundreds of thousands of years ago that traditionally were maybe not even like referred to that much, but now we're being chained to them. And you're like not allowing your society to course correct as needed and adapt 
and change, which is just like a destination. Like it's, it's just a recipe for stagnation, which was really unfortunate. Um, Katie is saying you're overestimating Indian secularism. Indian secularism is not real secularism. It's this weird Gandhian secularism. Yeah. Where it's, it's so hard to try to explain to people how it works. Um, Bobul is saying that's not how it works, Armin. Uh, in again referring to this secularism in the law contention, or when you were we were talking about triple talak. Triple talak is also outlawed partly because it's considered sinful even within Islam. So it's not even necessarily on the argument that this is not a good practice to have in our society because it's so they're using Islam against Islam, like the hijab yeah. ones. They're like, oh, we can't find hijab anywhere mandated in Islam. Okay, okay, okay. I, I see. I see how it works. Clever, clever. Hindu yeah. court. Oh, and Jim wait, wait. has a good comment. Oh, yeah. Jim is saying, "I presume there's no atheist personal law. I think you presume you presume Koresh. Well, why not? We should use their own weapons against them. Okay? The percentage of atheists in India is rising. We need an atheist personal law. And this way, every time they want to come for blasphemy and stuff, we're like, well, that's part of the atheist personal law. So, you know, can mm -hmm. we can we can, mm -hmm. can we petition the courts for an atheist personal law? Well, I think so the partial, partially the issue comes is like on all your documentation from a very early age or maybe as soon as you're born, like your religious background is on your documentation. So even if you leave, technically, you're still considered part of that government. There have been Indians who fought really hard to get no caste and no religion listed on any of their documentation, but they're only allowed to secure that because none of that was ever listed on that their documentation from the very beginning. It's like an exception to the rule. It's, it's, it's extremely difficult to be able to be acknowledged by the government as not religious. Um, okay. I'm, okay. So uh, Bengal, um, Bengali is also confirming what Bobo said above saying, you, yes, you can do a registry marriage without any religious ceremony. I'm not saying that. I'm not, I don't want to, I'm not saying an option to opt out of this whole uh, personal law thing. I want to add a personal law where you opt in and be like, my culture, I know this is, I, by the way, I don't believe any of this. I just want to use their weapons against them, okay? I'm like, my culture is atheism, and these are the set of, and I know, guys, atheism is nothing other than a lack of belief in God, but I'm just trying to use it as a tactic, okay? Just be like, oh, okay, maybe, okay, fine, Athe not atheism, okay? Not atheist personal law, because atheism is just like lack of belief in God. How about secular, okay? Let's add secular personal law and call secularism a set of cultural values that a whole bunch of, a lot of Indians have. And that should be added as addition to all the other personal laws just for the sake of equality and be like, I want to opt in on to that one. And if you opt into that one, hey, guess what? Gay marriage is part of that, okay? Gay marriage, so you're saying um, these are Hindu girls who are because it, it would be violating their Hindu personal law. Well, they're not part of Hindu personal law. They're part of the secular personal law. And based on that culture, it is completely in line with their culture. So why not that? Why can't we do or that? Or even better, what if we just had a uniform civil code? Huh? That's what I would like. I would like a uniform civil code. Yes, I would like people to be held to the same standard. You're not going to get that. Given that you're not going to get that in India, I'm just saying, like, given that you have personal laws, well, there's a lot of secularists in India, so they should get their own personal law as well. That's not going to happen. You're dreaming, Susanna. No, I think, I mean, <laughs> the BJP is actually very much pushing for a uniform civil code, or oh, at least yeah. that's on their platform. I don't know how okay, much good. Be there. Okay, good. Here's the thing. Let's, let's say this. I support the BJP on this one thing, okay? So for people who think like in we're theory, dogmatically, but let me be clear. This is the this is the issue, is that I have major concerns about the BJP implementing this in a way that still protects their majoritarianism, and is mainly utilized as a way to put minorities in their place. Like if they construct a uniform civil code that protects what they want or what they hold dear, but then takes away what others hold dear like is it comes at their expense like that's what i'm very concerned about 
is like this is just being utilized as a way to mainly put muslims in their place because there is a lot about muslim personal law in india that i hate i'm patently i hate um so it i don't know it's I, it's if it's, if it's gonna take away all those privileges from muslims as long as it's taking away from all other religious groups i'm completely okay with it but i want but this is good because now we have something that we could say like we support the bjp on so to show people that we're not dogmatically just like anti everything that the bgp says like we'll this is a good thing that we could like be like hey look because you know i for example i'm very much against trump but people like well is it trump anything that trump did that you're for it because if i can't find anything it shows that i'm dogmatically against something rather than having reason so we found something with the bgp that i think i could personally be like yeah i'm for, i'm completely for this here re, you want to read yeah this? Um, katie wait, is saying wait. um sorry you're just oh first. wait um okay so this is a fantastic comment from bubble bubble is saying modi recently said he wants to introduce a uniform civil code with polyamorous marriage for both genders okay modi, oh my god you got me on this one you got me freaking based base. <laughs> let's do it Oh my Can I God. have that here, I, please? I'm actually, in, I'm actually now gonna defend Modi on this one. Finally, we found something that's fantastic. This is the one okay. thing. The one thing. Oh. <laughs> okay. this is great. Um, there will be yeah, more Katie's progressive saying, than everywhere else in the world. Yeah, Go, yeah. Amazing. <laughs> uh, Katie is saying <laughs> the BJP wants a uniform civil code, but there's obviously a catch to that. It seems more in line with Hinduism and not very friendly. Uh, not very minority friendly instead of a true universal civil code, which is Stormy is saying right now you'll get a Hindu code wrapped up as a uniform civil code, which is basically what mm. I was trying to express as like my concern. Um, okay, so I'm going to go with that. So I, if we can't support uh, the BJP on this one, I'm just going to do the polyamory one. Can we support him on that one? <laughs> Give us something. Okay. I I fully support the idea of, of eventually a uniform civil code 100 percent. i think i think the country has to evolve to that place like these different rules for different people isn't going to last like the blatant hypocrisy with how sikhs are treated versus muslims versus hindus like that can't go on forever people like it, it, it they're like well, look at this this doesn't make any sense like just different standards for different citizens i don't like it right and also um Oh, Katie is saying the polyamory thingy for all genders is certainly based, though. Yeah. And Bubble yeah. was saying that the only penal code that you cannot opt out of for inheritance is Hindu. So if you were born in a Hindu family, you you cannot, you know, go to a different form of personal code to deal with your inheritance. You're stuck that way. Like, that's so unfair. People have no choice over what background they're born into, and they are subject to different rights being available to them. That's wrong. Hmm. Um, AJ is pointing out that we have no super chats. AJ, that's because we have the donation option right now. Okay, and the donation option on the super on the live chat is better than the super chat because the super chats YouTube takes a part of it, right? But with the donation option that now we have enabled, um, you know, you do, YouTube doesn't take a cut. Not only it doesn't take a cut, it even covers the transaction fee, so it's really good. So you could use the donation option instead. And if you want to do like the super chat, um, you could add a comment to it, but the donations you can't. So if you make a donation, put your name on the donation and then make a comment right after it. So we'll treat it like a super chat that way. Oh, AJ is saying donation is not working in Australia. Oh, okay. Well, in that case, just you're a member. So we'll just like, just, you know, we'll, we'll pay attention to member comments either way. So because you have the YouTube membership thing. I don't know. Yeah. So I didn't know that the donation option doesn't work in Australia. I don't know. We'll see whether. We'll have to investigate what work. locations it's available in because there's weird rules on that. I don't know. What do you guys tell us? What, what, what do you prefer? The donation option on the live chat or the super chat option? Because, you know, monetarily, we you know. YouTube not getting a cut seems pretty good, but if we don't get so many super chats because people don't have that available, then it's weird because in the places where they don't have the donation, they should make the super chat en enabled in those places then. Yeah. But we have a correction from Bobo for the for the previous. Oh yeah, Bobo is saying, guys, I'm sorry. I think Modi's speech was a satirical post I saw. Oh, Susie's Susie, you're frozen. 
can't find it. Right? Wait, wait, wait. Susie, you're frozen. You need to go back and read the comments oh, from the man. beginning. Guys, please donate so we could buy Susanna a new computer. <laughs> okay, but yeah, read it again. Um, Bobo saying, guys, I'm sorry. I think Modi's speech regarding uh, polyamory for all genders it was a satirical post I saw because I can't find it online. Friendship with Modi is canceled. Really? We can't have just one good thing? Like, I just, we, oh my God. We need to find one thing we like about Modi or the BGP. Like, by the way, what do we do? Because now we need to cut this part and add it to the other news. Because or else, I'd, when we cut this news segment, it, it's going to be people. So, yes, yeah, so maybe we could. If it's not too much to ask, maybe we could ask our editor to cut out this part and add it to the new segment. But that's so sad because I was hoping that we, there's something. So there's nothing about Modi that we like. Guys, please, here's a mission. In the comment section after the stream, please challenge us and find something about BJP or Modi that we could celebrate as something that is good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here's a good thing. He gives us good memes. No, something that he intentionally does that is good, that is good that we could celebrate. And AJ is saying that's going to take a while. Well, here's, that's a challenge. That's a challenge for you guys. Something that we could actually celebrate. You know, for example, people ask me what's, what's something that you could celebrate about the Islamic Republic of Iran, right? And my answer is always like, well, they encourage people leaving Islam in Iran. Like they are the main, <laughs> <laughs> they are the main force behind people leaving Islam. That's one good thing I could say about the Islamic Republic of Iran. But that's cheating, okay? Like the challenge is say something good about them that they intended to do okay mm -hmm. now that's difficult i haven't found anything yet but that's the challenge okay anyways i just wanted to i gave the challenge for what things that modi did that was good uh and people responded bobo says modi has done good work in encouraging startups in india so there you go i'm gonna add that to my list and you know i'm gonna mention it and katie's saying he might eventually lead to india's progress extremely fast and be allergic, uh, oh, resulting in India being allergic to fascism like Germany. Again, that doesn't count. That's like cheating because I also say that one, the good thing about the Islamic Republic of Iran is that they're encouraging people to leave Islam. I'm talking about intentionally. What is what is something good about them that intentionally is good? So that doesn't count. Um, so bubbles, we go with bubbles. Okay. Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Avabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below. 